The views and opinions expressed on the Veterans in Politics radio show and podcast are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of Vegas All Net Radio, its affiliates, or its parent company. The United States will collapse economically before they do not pay Social Security or any other entitlement benefits. Maybe they'll trim some of the social welfare programs back, maybe food stamps, maybe unemployment, will, which has been extended up to two years in some cases. Right. But the, the United States will fall before they do something to Social Security. Well, you know what they say. They say first, this is going to be the first time in U.S. history that uh, America is going to default on their loans. Are you, is there any truth in that? Well, technically, yes. It will be the first time on record that the United States will default. But it will not be the first time that the United States does not have the money to pay their debts. And something else, the, uh, the frenemy relationship we have with China. Uh-huh. Well, what, what does that word mean, frenemy? Frenemy. Friends and enemies. Ah. Okay. Is that it, like friends with benefits? <laughs> no, that's a little bit more of a oh, favorable. I got a, little, I got a little confused. That's a little bit more of a favorable type situation. Oh, so frenemy is friends of enemies. Frenemy, mean, meaning we're friends and enemies. Oh, friends. And, how, frenemy. How, how, how you do both? Is that like being bisexual, actually? Is it? Probably not. <laughs> I'm just trying to play devil's advocate, trying to understand the, your new terminology of frenemy. No, <laughs> the uh, li- linguistically that is not like liking it both ways, you know. That, that would not be a, a linguistic synonym. I feel, there. I feel like I'm doing I, I'm, I'm doing one of those sex shows that they have on Sunday night, at eleven o'clock. <laughs> you know, I didn't tune in for that one last time, so I I probably missed out on. It. I'll, I'll try to catch the next one though. A, a frenemy. Frenemy, okay. like the relationship between the United States and China. Right, friends of enemies. It, it's we meaning we're friends and enemies. Oh, okay. We're we're both. We're both. Right. Dog so and cat. There's a mouse there's and a, rat. Yeah, <laughs> okay. di- okay. dichotomy kind of thing. I we, got you. we have to have each other. Right. <clears throat> China is carrying the vast majority of our debt. I mean, India is carrying some. Germany too, but uh, China is our frenemy. They must have us, and we must have them. China does not want us to collapse economically. Otherwise, there will be no one to purchase all their product. Right. And, uh, th- again, they, all, they want the return on their, on their bonds. So right. it's a, uh, a frenemy relationship. Wow. You know, I've never heard that terminology before. That's why I was trying to understand it with, with, um, with, with different, uh, different words that I could understand, actually. Well, well I'm a linguist. Ah, a linguist. <laughs> Pretty interesting. Are you done talking about that? I, I am, I, and and people out there don't don't uh, don't believe everything you hear on the out there on the networks. Yeah, it, it's not all true. The sky is not falling. Okay, it, it is not. You will have your mortgage. You will have your auto loan. Your note. Okay. Hey, you know something? Um, the Veterans and Politics International. We're doing a, a dinner ball uh, October fifteenth, and. Uh, one of the places that we're we're, we're really um, looking at is the uh, plaza, because it's downtown Las Vegas. Help with the re, um, uh, what, what's that word? Renovation, mm-hmm. revitalization of downtown Las, Las Vegas. Oh yeah, and because um, you know the plaza is closed and they're they're mm-hmm. remodeling. So uh, we got uh, Caroline Goodman, Mayor Goodman, coming to speak, and uh, we just locked in um, Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley. She's coming to speak as nice. keynote. And um, um, tentatively, uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor Brian Krolicki is coming to speak. But, um, you know, I, I figured that I'm going to go out and uh, help promote this thing. And so I showed up at the the um, Clark County Democrat Central Committee meeting. <laughs> CCDCC. Yeah, I was trying to make sure I pronounced that all correctly. 
um, down there on Lamb and Bonanza, um, uh, apparently the, the Electrical Union of Brotherhood. And, and I, got kicked, I got kicked out. Why? Where's the brotherhood in that? Why, why did they kick you out? Because, I, you know, I knew a lot of people down there. I'm sure. And um, they kicked me out because I'm a registered Republican. So um, they said I'll take the flyers and, and, and pass it on, but I wasn't allowed to be there. I didn't know if it was some kind of secret operation that they're doing and you needed a top secret clearance to be there. Did or, you have to show your card? What card? Your voter's registration card. Well, they, they, they know me by sight. I see. It's like a deer in the woods, you know, shot, <coughs> sh- shot on sight. So anyways, they asked me to leave. Would you believe that? That and, wasn't very nice. You know what? The, the problem with this country is politics. That's the problem. The problem with this country is there's too many division amongst the parties. So, so you know, while we're all fighting about what we like or what we don't like, why don't we just fight for what's right for the American people as a whole instead of fighting for party um, favorites? Well, we does, have, does that make any sense it, to you? It, it makes a lot of sense, and, and you're spot on. Yeah. Uh, if people would just vote for centrists as opposed to those on the fringe, right? then we would, we would have more progress. Yeah, but I mean, look, 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 at, look at this debt ceiling thing. Uh, Republicans are blaming the Democrats. Democrats are blaming the Republicans, you know. And it's unfortunate we don't have any other um, political parties within the House and the Senate, like an IAP or a Libertarian. Or well, we have Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Is, a, isn't he a registered Republican, he, though? He is. He's a Republican out of uh, the Texas. Is that That's like saying Joe Lieberman, right? It, you know, <laughs> Lieberman's. You know, he'll, Lieberman will go either way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ron Paul just has certain values that he sticks to. Right. And it, his message hasn't changed right. since he's since he first entered Congress in the seventies. I see. So. And what message is that? Well, in the Federal Reserve, uh-huh. bring home the troops, right. es- establish a a foreign policy. Right. That that is friendly uh-huh. and diplomatic, right? Yet it's not imperialistic. Well, Ron Paul wants to shut down all the military bases across the, the world. He wants to change foreign policy. I mean, so, I mean, if you do that, you know, and bring everybody home, we we will be like naked. Uh, I mean, we can't defend our, 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 our coalition forces in, in adequate time unless we're going to press drop a bomb or something. You, you know what? You there won't be no ground troops. You, you cannot just instantly bring all the troops home. Okay, that's and, what he wants and, to and do. And right? pull everyone out. That's what he wants to do. I, I've, I've heard several he, speeches he, from him. He wants to bring the troops home. Yes, yeah. but all the troops. Believe me, he's, he's, he said A L L, and he wants to put them all on the border uh, of the United States uh, between uh, Canada, Canada, and and Mexico as well. Well, I'd I'd have them down in Mexico. There's a war going on <laughs> at our border in Mexico. Oh. I mean, it's there's more people dying there than in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. You know what somebody told me today? Somebody told me that. America is the best country, which I, I totally agree. Agreed. And, and 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 this person summed it up by saying, "This is the only country, um, homelessness, or, or homeless people are fed good." <laughs> he goes, "Another country, regular people are just skinny, 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 and you see their bones. This is the only country homeless people are fed good." Look, you know, I, I saw. Some, How do you feel about that statement? I, I agree that homeless people are fed. And no, he said fed good. Maybe they are. Well, I don't know if they're well fed, but uh, they're not going. I, they're not I, going I, hungry. I can't say they're not going hungry, but uh, there are more homeless shelters in the United States than I believe in, in other foreign countries. Right. I've been to 16 countries. I've seen uh, you know some ghettos in a few places. Right. Uh, but I saw something else that was really interesting. The statistics on what poor or people who live in poverty in the United States have, right. more than half of them have cable TV. Uh, more than half of them have a cell phone. Uh, more than half of them have an automobile. 
So, I mean, th- these are luxuries. These are modern day practicalities. Uh, well, a cell phone anyway. You don't have to have cable TV. But, but many of them have that. And you don't have to have a car, but right. believe me, it, it's definitely, it, it's almost a practicality. Yeah, you can get by on public transportation if you live in certain areas, mostly you know maybe back east or in uh, L.A. or something. But in Vegas, you definitely need a car. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or, a, or a good pair of shoes and a, uh, and a, a, and a bottle of water. <laughs> I don't think the shoes and the bottle of water is going to work in this <laughs> But, um, you know, uh, um, Veterans Court, um, I have to take my hat off to Clark County. They, they're, they're starting to do a very good job implementing Veterans Court and judicial system. And um, it's been working. And I don't know how many vets they have in the program, but um, I, I know the court system's been um, um, really asking uh, defendants if they are uh, military veterans. And uh, in, in the case of uh, Eric LaCasey, um, that, that one... Um, a Marine veteran that was looking at uh, years in state pen for violating his was parole. Wasn't he suffering from t- PTSD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that, that was the one that uh, was uh, wanted to get suicide by a cop, and he mm-hmm. went probation and uh, um, uh, allegedly impersonating a police officer. He got veterans court for that, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he's an Iraq and a Somali uh, um, combat vet, and he suffered some PTSD. He's been wounded uh, in combat. He's received a silver um, star. And um, now he's got released from jail. So I just want to shout out to all the folks that help him uh, get released from jail. And um, well, hopefully and, he'll and, and his probation got reinstated. This was in uh, Judge Bell's courtroom, so that that was pretty good. Well, hopefully he'll keep his keep everything together. Yeah, but PTSD is a mother, though. I I know. You know, you, sometimes people... you can't control it unless unless you get the right type of therapy and, 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 and prescription drugs, although they did say marijuana was good for PTSD, <coughs> just to put it out there. Well, you know what? Ron Paul wants to legalize marijuana. I, have, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem I don't, with that. I, 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 I want it on record. I do not use marijuana. But I have, He's lying, folks. I have no problem <laughs> with I, You know, if you want to light up in your living room right, right. before you go to bed, do it. If well, you why does it got to be before you go, but once you do when you wake up? Or whenever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for, for some people, <laughs> I see that helps them get through the day right. better. But, you know, so, you know, our drug policy, which is one of the, the main reasons mm-hmm. for all the conflict on our Mexican border. Right. It, it, I mean, it's all about drugs. There's some other types of smuggling <clears throat> that's occurring. There's, uh, like, Freon. Uh, Can you believe people smuggle Freon no, ag- across the border? I can't believe that. Well, d- due to EPA restrictions, uh, apparently we are not responsible enough to go and purchase our own Freon right. and install it in our air conditioners. You've got to have a, a specific license, wow. which is just another form of tax and control right. out there, which if you listen to some of the Ron Paul uh, YouTube videos, uh-huh. you know, he explains a lot of that. But our foreign policy, a lot of our PTSD, I mean, our wars, are are a direct result of our foreign policy. Right. Okay. We, we just didn't. Nine <clears throat> eleven just didn't happen one day. The the, uh, the the twenty Saudi or nineteen Saudis that were involved in that. They weren't all Saudis. Nineteen of them. Were, okay, seventeen of them were Saudis. Uh-huh. There, there there were twenty altogether. Right. Okay, I, th- I think 19 were Saudis. Really? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so they didn't just wake up one day and said, hey, here's an excellent idea. Let's, right. let's learn how to fly a plane, uh, and then we'll, right. we'll, we'll, we'll jump on one and fly it into some buildings. I mean, yeah. since the 1950s, the United States has been involved in the Middle East in their oil business. Uh-huh. Uh, we've manipulated policy. We've put in puppets, puppet regimes, the Shah. Uh, back in the 70s, we had the uh, Ayatollah Khomeini. Right. Who, they ousted the Shah of Iran. You know, I mean, that that's not over. I mean, it's still, and it, who's, who is it now, uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad? Right. You know, there's a reason why he hates the West. Uh. But believe me, I'm, I'm not pro-radical Islam at all. Right. 
but there is a reason they hate us, and okay. it is our foreign policy. We, uh -huh. We're in their oil. Every I mean, the United States consumes the vast majority of uh, of produced oil. And we're, we're addicted to it. We have to have it. Everything you see in front of you, it took oil to produce it and or get it here. So the raw crude. It, it it's vital to our uh, society yeah. and everybody throws around the well the solar and the wind <laughs> energy which you know I've been involved with solar energy I would love to see uh, us <clears throat> become independent from foreign oil it, it would it would also one of the positive ramifications from that would be less wars and less uh, combative right. foreign policy it, it would be a more diplomatic world however the <clears throat> I don't care how green our our politicians say they are. If they were that green, it would be implemented. Right. And the technology, it, it, you know, it boils down to cost. It's more cost efficient, cost effective for us to pump crude oil and process it, refine it, and distribute it because of the the technology that is not being released. Right. To the to the public. Okay. All right. Let's take a let's take a commercial break. Come back. This is Steve Sanson and Patrick Llewellyn with Veterans in Politics. Listen up. If you're a military veteran, if you're related to a veteran, or if you know a veteran, you'll enjoy the Veterans Reporter Radio Show every Thursday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. with me. I'm your host, Chuck N. Baker. Every week, we will explore veterans' issues and we'll have guests who will talk about topics of interest to and about the veterans' community. And if you don't listen, you'll have to give me 20 push-ups. This public service announcement is brought to you by Veterans in Politics International. The Veterans in Politics mission is to teach, educate, organize, and awaken our veterans and their families to select, support, and vote intelligently for a better world and to protect ourselves from our own governments and a culture of corruption and to be the political voice for those and other groups that do not have one. There are too many homeless veterans and more help is needed from the VA. Every veteran service organization post should adopt a local homeless veteran. The funding of VA medical centers is inadequate and building a VA hospital in southern Nevada is moving at a slow pace. The budget has been flatlined for too many years. The VA is too quick to deny claims and too slow to help veterans gather records in support of claims. Local politicians ignore veterans and their issues. They perceive a lack of organization among their local veterans and that it won't hurt them at election time. Veterans too often vote party, not veteran issues. All veterans should vote in every election. The news media give an adequate coverage to veteran issues and events. You must send letters to the editor and voice this concern. Please contact your members of Congress and Senate and urge them to co-sponsor key legislation in supporting our veterans. Please support Veterans in Politics. And to get more information, go to www.veteransinpolitics.com. Americans have been fooled by politicians about illegal immigration. They make you think that if you bring up this topic, you are a racist. Did you know that America is the only country on this planet that does not enforce its federal immigration laws? For the fear of being called a racist, I am for legal immigration. I was born on the island of Jamaica, became an American citizen, served 12 years in the U.S. military, served in Desert Storm, and received a Presidential Unit Citation, National Defense Medal, and Marine Corps accommodation. Our immigration laws serve a purpose. I understand that this country was founded on immigration, but there is a wrong way and a right way. I'm here to tell you that illegal immigration is breaking our federal laws. Why don't you call me a racist? This is Steve Sanson. 
On Saturday, August 6th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., Shine Family Foundation in association with Sin City Car Scene, 360 Car Scene, OCC Inc., and sponsored by Tap Out Gym will be holding the biggest yard sale event here in Southern Nevada. It's to help raise money for the families of those who are deployed. Come on out and help support these families and make sure that they have everything that they need while their special someone is serving overseas. That's from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Tap Out is located at 4040 West Hacienda. Hope to see you there. 9711 Southeastern Avenue, Suite H1 is the place to be. Get yourself a treat. Come to M&Y Snowballs to beat the heat. More than 40 regular flavors, 8 sugar-free flavors, or your choice of 2 cream flavors. Stuff your snowball with soft for a dollar more. We have smoothies, soft drinks, cheese and nachos, and even more. New Orleans original flavor, all of which you can savor. We hope to see you there. This is Steve Sanson and Patrick Llewellyn with Veterans in Politics. We are back after that commercial break. I, I don't know what's going on with uh, Daniel Miller or um, I believe Kirk Lippel is supposed to be calling up around 2.30. But uh, without further ado, we have former Judge George Assad on the line. Judge, how are you today? Very well. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Judge, sorry I had to put you on the spot. <laughs> no problem. Judge, t- tell, tell, could you just give us a little bio about yourself? Uh, I don't want to bore your listeners. Uh, <laughs> Come on, Judge. What do you mean, my bio? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, what do you want to know? Just, you know, just tell us about you, your bio, how you started, you know, became a judge, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, I'm a modest and humble guy, Steve. Uh, I hate to talk about myself, but... Uh, I came from humble beginnings, let's say that, and I was fortunate enough to uh, work my way through uh, junior high school, high school, college, law school, and uh, all because we're living in the greatest country in the world. This would never have been able to uh, come to fruition if I had not been living in the United States of America. God bless America, and God bless you guys who served our country and defended our freedom and our liberties. I have all the uh, respect in the world. For anybody who wears the uniform or who has worn the uniform. Oh, thank you, Judge. Judge, what 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 do you think happened with this last election you're in? My election? Yes, sir. Um, boy, I don't know. Just uh, bad timing. You know, the situation with my son didn't help, and uh, the president of Syria has the same last name as I do. He's out there uh, killing thirty, forty, fifty people every day, and. Uh, I think people just associated my name with him, and uh, that probably had something to do with it. Well, I, I always recognize you as a constitutionist and a, and a tough on crime judge serving the uh, constituency of uh, Las Vegas. Uh, I mean, you, you, your son and the, the um, president of Syria didn't even come to my mind when I voted for you. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, unfortunately, I think some of the voters uh, weren't that knowledgeable and they weren't up on um, the facts and the current events as they really were. So it's kind of uh, guilt by association. <clears throat> so, Judge, what are your plans now in the future? Uh, I'm just going to help raise my beautiful 11-year-old niece and uh, help her get through uh, the next couple of years of uh, elementary school and then hopefully get her into Gorman High School. She's doing very well, and uh, we need to spend more time with her and help her develop into a uh, even more fantastic young lady than she already is. Yeah. Now, the last time I spoke to you, were you going to go through the channels of officially adopting her, or are you just going to leave it as is and just pretty oh, much... I would love, I would love to formally adopt her, but uh, that call is up to her mom, so... If her mom ever allows that, that would be fantastic. But for all practical purposes, you are her your, her uh, primary caretaker. Well, I'm, I'm one of three. Uh, her aunt uh, is very instrumental, and, of course, her mother uh, does a fantastic job as well. Very nice. You're the, you're the, uh, the father figure for her, though. Right, huh. right. You know, where they say it takes a village to raise a child these days. 
So, and when do you think she'll attend Gorman? Well, she's in the uh, sixth grade. She's going to be starting the sixth grade now. So, two more years, and then uh, she'll be knocking on the door at Gorman High School, hopefully. Oh, very good. And do you already have her uh, have her eyes set of going to UNLV? Uh, Harvard. Actually. Harvard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or some other equivalent Ivy League school, but you know, if you get into Harvard, uh, you're all, you're pretty much set for life. So, Judge, are you going to open up your own? UNLV pla- UNLV is a great school too, so I I wouldn't mind if she stayed here locally and went to UNLV. That would be fantastic. So, Judge, are you going to open up your own practice, or are you going to go work for Glenn Lerner, or what? <laughs> Isn't that where uh, all the judges go? <laughs> <laughs> No, I think he's already got uh, plenty of staff over there, so I think I'm just going to hang loose for a while and see what uh, what comes my way. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, Judge. Um, I I was able to meet the new basketball coach. Have you have you met him yet? I have, David Rice. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Good coach. We're gonna, I'm very optimistic about uh, the program, and he's going to be able to get us. Uh, pretty deep into the tournament i would expect in the next two or three years i'm pretty optimistic as well i know a few people who have uh been associated with him over the years and all they have is good things to say about him absolutely very bright very good coach uh he's very enthusiastic and uh i think he'll do good things for us i I like it that he's young yeah i mean for a coach he's uh he's one of the he might be the youngest coach in the mountain west and uh, one of the younger ones in in uh, NCAA, so I'm uh, I'm all behind him. I hope he does really well. Me too. All right, Judge. Well, thank you for uh, coming on in such short notice. Anytime, anything for you, Steve. And I'll talk to you soon. All right, my friend. Take care. And that was former Judge George Assad with the uh, Las Vegas Municipal Court. This is Steve Sands, Patrick Llewellyn. Don't go away, folks. We'll take another commercial break. in politics takes a proactive approach to provide you the veteran with the political voice for which you fought and served veterans in politics is becoming the premier veteran organization of the 21st century with political candidate interviews insight and endorsements public speaking engagements in support of american values radio shows to keep you updated on the latest in veteran and military support operations providing job placement and business support go to veteransinpolitics.com today and do your part in defending liberty While growing up, I've always asked my family, who is my father? I was told the name of a man. When I became older, I looked for this man and found him. He thought that I was his son as well. But after a DNA test, it was discovered that my family was lying to me all my life. I pressured my family to give me the real identity of my father. I then became suspicious and took my grandfather's DNA. After I buried my grandfather, two days later, I discovered that my grandfather was, in fact, my biological father. I questioned myself and asked, what is my purpose on this earth? I should have never been conceived. But when I look at my four children, I knew that everything happens for a reason. This is Steve Sanson. Find your identity. On Saturday, August 6th, from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., Shine Family Foundation, in association with Sin City Car Scene, 360 Car Scene, OCC Inc., and sponsored by Tap Out Gym, will be holding the biggest yard sale event here in Southern Nevada. It's to help raise money for the families of those who are deployed. Come on out and help support these families and make sure that they have everything that they need while their special someone is serving overseas. That's from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Tap Out is located at 4040 West Hacienda. Hope to see you there. 
9711 Southeastern Avenue, Suite H1 is the place to be. Get yourself a treat. Come to M&Y Snowballs to beat the heat. More than 40 regular flavors, 8 sugar-free flavors, or your choice of 2 cream flavors. Stuff your snowball with soft-serve ice cream for a dollar more. We have smoothies, soft drinks, cheese and nachos, and even more. New Orleans original flavor, all of which you can savor. We hope to see you there. What are you doing online? I'm checking out the belly dance class we took last week. Where is it at? Takebackyourbelly.com. That's right. We worked our arms. We worked our abs. We worked so hard and had a blast. No matter what, your shape or size. Come belly dance, you'll be surprised. (laughs) (laughs) For class schedule and location, log on to takebackyourbelly.com or call 219-3151. This is Jim Jonas asking you to listen to Veterans in Politics. Veterans in Politics is a weekly broadcast internet talk show hosted by myself, Jim Jonas, and Steve Sanson, president of Veterans in Politics Incorporated. That airs every Saturday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. at www.vegasallnetradio.com. Veterans in Politics' sole purpose is to teach, educate, and inform veterans on issues and the candidates that will affect them. Too many politicians say they support veterans and their issues, but their actions tell a different story. Here at Veterans in Politics, we will expose these politicians by giving them a chance to come in and explain their actions to veterans so veterans can truly make informed decisions. Listen every Saturday to stay informed and to hold politicians accountable for their votes. Are you a business owner struggling during these economic times? Please listen up. How would you like to put your business and services in front of every resident and business in the Las Vegas Valley for less than a penny per home? Yes, that's right. I said less than one cent per home in business. And how would you like to have a dynamic and exciting online presence with the major search engines? How about an online video for your business and a fully optimized website with absolutely no setup fee? Hi, my name is George. If you are interested in these and other services that can make your phone ring with clients and prospects, then call me at 702-296-8394. Just call George at 702 702- 2-296-8394. Thank you. Well, we're back. This is Steve Sanson, Patrick Llewellyn with Veterans in Politics. We have live on the air Kathleen Booten, Henderson City Councilwoman. Kathleen, how are you doing today, ma'am? I'm good, Steve. How are you? Kathleen, thanks for taking our call at short notice. We really appreciate that. But uh, it seems like our guest ran away from us this weekend. Kathleen? Your guest ran away from you? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What did you do, Steve? I don't know what I did, but um, maybe I just didn't do enough. I don't know. (laughs) But you know what? You know what? Um, I had two guests, and they were um, both in the special election for CD2. And, um, uh, you know, that they, they didn't win. Their, from their prospective parties, so I guess they decided that they didn't need to come on the air for some apparent reason. But um, I really do appreciate you coming on a short notice, and um, thank you for that, Councilwoman. No problem. Councilwoman, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. I work full-time for the Nevada Partnership for Homeless Youth. I'm the executive director, and I run the foundation and the housing and drop-in center programs for our homeless kids in Southern Nevada, and then I serve on the city council part time, and um, definitely have my plate full. But uh, the two are very much interrelated when it comes to community service and commitment. K- Get a lot accomplished, Councilwoman. This is Patrick Llewellyn. Are, are there that many homeless kids in in Southern Nevada? There's about ten thousand, Steve. There's when you count couch surfers. So those are kids that are at your place one night, my place one night. Those are usually kids in high school. They're either pregnant or and or parenting. And then there's about 500 street youth who actually are chronic street youth, or what we call squatters, that live on the streets. And these are kids under 18, strictly kids under 18. Because sometimes you hear people talk about serving homeless youth, and they're going from, you know, 19 mm. to 21 to 23. You know, technically those folks can, they are adults. They can get social services. They can sign leases. Um, the populations that we're really focused on are the under-18 group who really don't have any other resources uh, to get themselves off the street. So how many under-18, how many actual minors are there that are 10,000. And, and, oh, if you stri- added the 18 to 24-year-olds, that number probably go up to about 30. Yeah, you know, that's that's kind of a demographic that 
should be, I don't know, I guess more independent on their own. But but as far as those 17 and under, is it, it's really that high. I had no idea. It really is. And, Steve, for the first time it, since I've been doing this, which is uh, we're celebrating our 10 years, I hope you come to our gala. It's October 1st at the uh, MGM. But we're... Um, We've been now in, in effect for 10 years because Nevada has what's called the right to shelter law. So Nevada is the only state in the country that will allow an unaccompanied minor to get the same services as if they were emancipated, if if the provider can provo- pr- prove that they were abused or neglected. So not only are these kids unaccompanied, these are kids who are, we, where we've, we've substantiated abuse and or neglect. I mean, it's that bad. And so... For the first time in 10 years, though, we're seeing this subpopulation of what we, got, we call throwaway kids who are kids who are hit and, and it's very, very, very much cultural who are, because you see it predominantly with boys in certain cultures who are hitting 15, 16, 17, and the parents are saying, hey, we can't take care of you anymore, and they're putting them out on their own just for financial reasons. They're still considered neglect victims under our state law, so we can serve them, but that's been a really, that's really pushed those numbers up through the roof. And with the uh, with the economic decline over the last couple of years, has that number increased? Significantly. <clears throat> Jeez, I, I, I had no idea that it was it was that bad in in Southern Nevada. So, how, K- Kathleen, this is Steve Sanson. How, how did the foundation um, um, reach these kids, or they know about your foundation? How does that work? Um, we have a website. It's NevadaHomelessYouth.org. Oh. All one word. Uh, we also have our program at all Terrible Herbs convenience stores, so you'll see our logos over their air pumps, and we have brochures up on the countertops. It's pretty easy to access, and we have a few different volunteer programs. If somebody looks at our website or grabs one of our brochures, they can pick one of the areas in our volunteer programs to help out or bring a donation. And the address at the drop-in center is 4981 Shirley Street. It's right across the street from the Thomas and Mac. And we're open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6. You, nobody needs an appointment. They can just come in any time and take a tour. Kids are always there. So, you know, if they want to interact with a kid or ask a couple questions, they can. If they like to bring us some donations um, and come in and take a tour, our doors are always open. Is that the safe place emblem? Yeah, that's safe place. Okay. Is it yellow and black? Yep. Yeah, okay. I've, I've seen that around. How do you receive your funding, Kath, um, Councilwoman? We have a budget of a million and a half, and we have about 20 different funding streams, private foundations, private donors, government grant sources. It's, it's pretty much a collaboration of financial streams. And how many kids walk through your doors? I'm trying to get the organization endowed. We're trying to, uh, now that we have the bills covered and we have the service delivery in place, we're, trying, we're looking more at planned giving and trying to reach out to that donor sect that would normally give their their will or planned giving or stock options, uh, those dollars to universities or hospitals, usually you see that big money doing that. But we're trying to trying to market ourselves and get it endowed so we can ensure that the services will be around forever. Are the kids who are under 18, are they attending school? Yes, of course. Uh, well, that- yeah, most of the couch surfers are already in school, and they just come and they look like normal, regular, average kids. What do you call and they'll them? They'll come by the drop-in center. They'll fill up their backpacks with food. Uh, we give them a one-day bus pass. They'll get uh, hygiene products. We they they work with our case managers. Um, some of them have stable living mm-hmm. conditions where a friend's parent has taken them in. Some of them don't. What's and a couch the game, surfer? The game really is get is to get them off the streets and make them productive members of society because 50% of the men going into Catholic Charities and Salvation Army will tell you that they were homeless teenagers before they were homeless adults. And so we take a really conservative approach to our service delivery that we've privatized our services really through Terrible Herbs um, and that we're looking at capturing this population at a younger age and, 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 and providing preventative services instead of intervening at a later age when they're on the streets and they have the substance abuse and mental health problems. And it's been very effective for us. We've helped 10,000 kids in the past 10 years, and 99% of the youth that we've served are college graduates and in the workforce. Kathleen, you you mentioned a a terminology that I'm not familiar with. What's a couch surfer? It's somebody that's at your place one night, Steve, and then hops around and sleeps at my place, and then sleeps at your place, and then sleeps at my place, and bounces 
from place to place. That sounds like Patrick Llewellyn right now. <laughs> it's funny how many people have couch surfers. I go out and I talk to parent groups, and people have couch surfers, and they don't even. They go, "Oh my gosh, I have friends that my kid has friends that stay at my house that do that." And I and I say to them, "Well, you should sit down and try to talk to them then, because there's usually some problems at home or no home when that's happening." So if I knock on your door, you 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 you'd give me your couch. I wouldn't give it to you, Steve. <laughs> Why not? But it'd probably help a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Am I too old for the program? The I'm in Santa Fe, and I was on my way out the door. So how much longer are you going to keep yeah. me on the phone? You, you know what? We, we want to let you go. We want you to enjoy your vacation. But th- that's a, just an excellent charity. I, I knew nothing about that. I'm very glad you called in or that you came on air. And uh, could you please say the contact information for your uh your organization again, please? Yeah, it's NevadaHomelessYouth.org. We're honoring some great people at our dinner October 1st. Okay. And, and you're going to give me the information on that? Yeah. Okay. I sure will. It's, okay. um, it's Saturday, October 1st at the MGM Grand. And then the drop-in center is on Shirley Street, right across the street from the Thomas and Mac. And you're welcome to stop by anytime Monday through Friday from 9 to 6. All right, Kathleen. Thank you so much for hey, coming Steve, on the show. You. God bless you. Have a great God day. God bless you, too. That was uh, Kathleen Booten, who is the current councilwoman for Henderson. This is Steve Sanson and Patrick Llewellyn. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back momentarily. Listen up. If you're a military veteran, if you're related to a veteran, or if you know a veteran, you'll enjoy the Veterans Reporter Radio Show every Thursday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. with me. I'm your host, Chuck N. Baker. Every week, we will explore veterans' issues and we'll have guests who will talk about topics of interest to and about the veterans community. And if you don't listen, you'll have to give me 20 push-ups. Veterans in Politics takes a proactive approach to provide you, the veteran, with the political voice for which you fought and served. Veterans in Politics is becoming the premier veteran organization of the 21st century with political candidate interviews, insight, and endorsements. Public speaking engagements in support of American values. Radio shows to keep you updated on the latest in veteran and military support operations. Providing job placement and business support. Go to veteransinpolitics.com today and do your part in defending liberty. Americans have been fooled by politicians about illegal immigration. They make you think that if you bring up this topic, you are a racist. Did you know that America is the only country on this planet that does not enforce its federal immigration laws? For the fear of being called a racist, I am for legal immigration. I was born on the island of Jamaica, became an American citizen, served 12 years in the U.S. military, served in Desert Storm, and received a Presidential Unit Citation, National Defense Medal, and Marine Corps accommodation. Our immigration laws serve a purpose. I understand that this country was founded on immigration, but there is a wrong way and a right way. I'm here to tell you that illegal immigration is breaking our federal laws. Why don't you call me a racist? This is Steve Sanson. While growing up, I've always asked my family, who is my father? I was told the name of a man When I became older, I looked for this man and found him. He thought that I was his son as well. But after a DNA test, it was discovered that my family was lying to me all my life. I pressured my family to give me the real identity of my father. I then became suspicious and took my grandfather's DNA. After I buried my grandfather, two days later, I discovered that my grandfather was, in fact, my biological father. I questioned myself and asked, What is my purpose on this earth? I should have never been conceived. But when I look at my four children, I knew that everything happens for a reason. This is Steve Sanson. Find your identity. This is Jim Jonas asking you to listen to Veterans in Politics. 
Veterans in Politics is a weekly broadcast internet talk show hosted by myself, Jim Jonas, and Steve Sanson, president of Veterans in Politics Incorporated. That airs every Saturday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. at www.vegasallnetradio.com. Veterans in Politics' sole purpose is to teach, educate, and inform veterans on issues and the candidates that will affect them. Too many politicians say they support veterans and their issues, but their actions tell a different story. Here at Veterans in Politics, we will expose these politicians by giving them a chance to come in and explain their actions to veterans so veterans can truly make informed decisions. Listen every Saturday to stay informed and to hold politicians accountable for their votes. On Saturday, August 6th, from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., Shine Family Foundation, in association with Sin City Car Scene, 360 Car Scene, OCC Inc., and sponsored by Tap Out Gym, will be holding the biggest yard sale event here in Southern Nevada. It's to help raise money for the families of those who are deployed. Come on out and help support these families and make sure that they have everything that they need while their special someone is serving overseas. That's from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Tap Out is located at 4040 West Hacienda. Hope to see you there. Well, we're back. This is Steve Sanson and Patrick Llewellyn with Veterans in Politics. Uh, we listened to uh, former Judge George Assad today, and we listened to uh, Councilwoman Kathleen Booten Henderson. Uh, that's because our two guests, uh, um, Dan, who's that? Daniel, Daniel Miller. Is that the proper way of saying it? Daniel was, Miller. You are correct. He's a former Republican candidate for Nevada's Congressional District Two special election and he didn't call it and didn't even tell me that he wasn't going to be on the show change his mind yeah now who actually is on that ticket uh actually it's mark amaday mark amaday uh he's probably going to win um 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 oh kate marshall kate marshall is the democratic Democratic. candidate right and then uh helen lean lehman independent and then there's um oh, I forgot his name he's the i a p candidate I'm looking at his name. I just can't is there a libertarian candidate no no there's i a p there's an independent there's a democrat and a republican but um there's Kirk Leppold, who is the former republican candidate from the vast congressional district two as well but the difference is kirk kirk is uh was a commander of the u s s Cole, the naval destroyer that got the um got the big hole in it. In Yemen, I remember and, that. And seventeen, nineteen sailors were killed. You know, I I don't know about you, Patrick. I mean, you served in in the army, and I served in the Marine Corps. I'm not going to go around telling people that um, I was in charge of a ship that got seventeen, nineteen sailors killed. Well, it was a terrorist attack. It's true, it was a terrorist attack. But my question would be, where, where where's your sentries? Where were your guards? I mean, you're on the um, coast of Yemen. I mean, Yemen is our ally, but it's in a Middle Eastern country. Two American embassies was blown up recently. Um, wouldn't you put out your patrols, your guards, your sentries, be on the lookout? Yeah, as I recall, they approached it in, in, in a speedboat. Uh, yeah, I got that. Yeah. yeah, but you also got those machine guns I, yeah on, they could have blasted it out of the water yeah and uh, my question would be why 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 didn't they blast it out the I water know, i don't know why they don't blast the somali somalian pirates out of the water yeah they see them coming up too yeah why not why not blast them blast them out but i i i would like a little bit more in-depth conversation um about um um how this happened you know because the thing, the thing that the thing that I see is, I mean, we we lost seventeen, nineteen sailors, or he lost seventeen to nineteen sailors under his watch. It wouldn't be something that I'd go around speaking to people about. Well, I write a book about. Was, wasn't it in port when it occurred? Yeah. So it's not like it was out on on open water sailing. Right. right. Maybe he wasn't even on the ship. Well, I mean, he could have been in. Dubai. I mean, no, no, no. You know how the military is. You, you, you don't matter if you're there or not. You're still in charge. You're still responsible. Yeah. And if he's going to write a book on the subject and make monies yeah. off of it, shouldn't he take responsibilities for those sailors that passed? Well, sure. It was under his watch. So exactly. you, you get the credit as well as you have to assume the liability. Exactly. Absolutely. So how much money did he make on that book? Oh, I don't know. 
don't know. But he used it to to infiltrate the Republican Party and 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 attempt to run for Congress is on the Republican ticket. Is he an actual conservative? I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. But apparently, uh, the Republican Party. Uh, chose Mark Amaday over him. So, well, we're about to find out when is that special election? September thirteenth. But uh, the Veterans of Politics Northern um, Nevada chapter did a um, a panel and interviewed the uh, CD two candidates, and uh, I, just, I don't know who won yet. I think they're sending a YouTube video around to all the areas in CD two f- to get a vote. And Straw poll, right? Sort of, yeah, basically. Okay. Well, good luck to him. Yeah. Well, that's Steve Sanson and Patrick Llewellyn, with veterans and politics folks. And uh, I'm sorry that the, the guests that are supposed to have been on um, didn't have the courtesy to call to say that they weren't going to come on. But I, I'm also thankful for the two guests that did come on, George Assad and Kathleen Booten. But next week, folks, we have a Republican candidate for United States president. And he's also a gay rights activist. That's Fred Krager. I hope I pronounced his name right. Fred Krager is going to be our guest next week. So this will be our first uh, U.S. presidential candidate in uh, four years. So I hope you tune in for that. And uh, I believe Jim Jonas will be back next week. This is Steve Sanson and Patrick Llewellyn with Veterans in Politics. Adios, amigos.